realistic salary for new developers. Today's topic on the Real Tough Candy live stream. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of my fellow software developers aspiring in the business, retired. Everyone is welcome. And I'm so glad everyone's tuning in tonight. We have had some great turnouts for these live streams. It's a new crowd every night. Sometimes there's familiar faces, sometimes it's a whole bunch of new people. But it is really nice being able to communicate with people because I don't know about you, but in my city, it's kind of hard to do that right now. Status update for uh, my neck of the woods here in the Midwest. I've been getting grocery delivery for the past couple weeks now, um, but my orders have been perversely inaccurate. I didn't get a receipt today. Half of the order was there and it's just like, man, I, I get it, but it's like, we're not even in the real thick of it yet. So, you know, food's here, things are fine, but you know, when it's shaky like that, when it's, when it's a little dubious, I gotta just do some deep breathing. As always, we can never start these live streams off without a product placement. I did it all for the JavaScript. So excited about my own merch. I broke the handle off the other day in the kitchen. We have cups. We have thick stickers. That's T-H-I-C-C. -C. Oh yeah. These are the big ones. These are the big ones. I don't, I don't like the teeny weeny stuff. I did it all for the JavaScript. T-shirts, many more designs available on CandyScript. Paradoodly is our mod at large today. We are also joined by the esteemed Michael Kornblum. Taking care of business in the live chat. We are gonna do a roll call, see what everyone's up to. And then we're gonna talk about a realistic salary for software developers. Now, not to give too much of a spoiler here, but really what we're gonna be talking about and focusing on is the fact that there isn't one, just one solid number for everyone. I wish I could tell everyone in the world, unless you're making $65,000 USD per year, skip the job. But there are so many factors um, and some pretty important factors, I might add, when it comes to first year salaries, or at least, new developer salaries. Some of us are able to level up really quick. We're gonna talk about that too. My guy Vlaslo is a new developer. I've been talking about him a lot on the live streams. He's been to a lot of them. I'm glad he's been here to hear me talk about him. Uh, but we're, we're gonna talk about his situation and just how fast you can level up in this industri industry. There is, no, there is no one size fits all. It's really important to remember. Let's check in with the peeps. Marco, Candace, how's it going? Legendary, 8TS, Aloha, Matt McPherson. Matt, hello. I think you're my new patron on Patreon. Check your email. Check, check your messages on Patreon because I uh, have some perks for you. I, I've been meaning to send them your way, but I need to get some info from you. Joseph Whittington, where have you been? How's it going? New World Websites. Cargo Ham 2010, hello from DC. Buryan Hernandez Mora, hi. Michael Kornbloom, Paradoodly, Austin Studies, hello. Mr. Zed, Janos, Hologram Nunchuck, and everyone joining us. Already 32 people in the chat. Thanks for tuning in tonight. Hello from Arizona. Hey, Wayne, how's it going? Okay, let's talk about this. And I'm hoping to get some input from people currently in the business or who were once in the business uh, because one thing that is a problem is that no matter what site you go to, it could be Indeed, PESA, Glassdoor, sometimes these estimates are perversely wrong, sometimes they're somewhat wrong, and sometimes they're just a little smidge wrong, but it's really rare to see an accurate an accurate summary of what you're going to be compensated as a new developer at these certain companies, unless it's, you know, one of the FANG level, Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, those are more available. But when it comes to, to places that most of us are going to work at, these are smaller businesses. These are startups. These places don't have salary histories. So it's tough. And I do want to, I do want to give that disclaimer. Now, as you may have seen in the thumbnail of this video. I was holding an actual paycheck. It since flew off my shelf. 
that was an actual paycheck from my uh, develop first developer job when I was in enterprise. I did did a whole video on it and I, where I shared the numbers. Paradoodly, if you have that link and people want to check out the video where I showed the actual paycheck, pop that link in the in the um, chat. My first job was in the Midwest, Midwestern United States, low, generally lower cost of living compared to the coasts. It was not in Chicago, uh, and I negotiated $45,000 a year for my first year. Now, going in, I knew that this was going to be more of an internship plus because even though I had really good, a really good application package, I, I nailed the interview. I, I interviewed uh, once in person and then had some correspondence with the senior dev through email, which we were talking about check, but I also knew it was a filtering technique. Uh, so it was an interview plus. So I, I interviewed in person with three people there with a the company owner, a programmer uh, for the IBM, ecosystem and then a senior develop a senior web developer did great they seem to enjoy uh, my application package and my portfolio and I took it for 45k the reason I took it for 45k was for multiple reasons number one it was in a place with a relatively low cost of living um, you know and if I would have been on the coast it would have been double that I wouldn't have taken a dev job for less than honestly six figures if I was in California, for example, maybe 85. Um, but I knew that 45 would go a long way in that area as far as homes and rent, as far as food, as far as just general cost of living stuff, transportation, etc. So this is not to say that developers should take more or less or that exact amount. It's quite the opposite. What I am trying to say is that these numbers are highly dependent on where the company is located and where you are located. And they're also dependent on your perceived capabilities as a software developer. And they're also dependent on your ability to negotiate or your willingness to negotiate. I honestly hate negotiation. Just tell me what you think I'm worth and I'll say yes or no. Just tell me your bottom number that you're willing to pay me and then I'll say yes or no. Because it's like, it's kind of insulting too. Because let's say you go to a, a job interview, you nail it, and then they give you an offer. Let's say it's, let's just say it's $30,000. And you're not happy with that number. So you say, you know what? Can you do 39.9? Or just, 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 just go with the example. Can you do 39.9? And so you, you, you go back and forth, you fuss and fight, and then the, the employer says, you know, I can do 39, I can do 38. So wait a minute, you're gonna pay me the least amount as possible, but because I said something, you're not gonna pay me thousands of dollars more? I just, I, I just think that whole process is archaic. Uh, it doesn't help the candidate at, at any point in the process. And it just, it can be disheartening. Because it's like, wow, that's really how much you thought I was worth. But this is something that um, can be the difference between a fifty and $65,000 salary is negotiation. Um, I hear from some people overseas where a fair salary is like $1,500 a month. So it really depends on the country and more specifically the geographical area. There was a tweet last year or two years ago from this guy in the Bay Area, San Francisco, right? He was making six figures. I think it was a software job. And he said, I can barely survive. I, I almost, I can, I can hardly be considered uh, just a normal functioning person. He was, he considered himself like in the clutches of poverty or, or getting there very soon, making over $100,000 a year. So the, the reality of the, the location is just, it's paramount. There is no way that uh, someone in the Midwest is going to be offering a new developer $120,000 $120, a year. That's just not happening. You may see 80. If you're a 1%, 1 or the, the cream of the crop, you might see 85. Um, but even in places like Minneapolis, which is 
pretty significant tech city. Now you'll never hear about it. We hear about Austin, we hear about Silicon Slopes, we hear about Silicon Valley, New York City. Even, um, what's, the, what's that place in North Carolina? It's not Raleigh, it's the Tri-City tri area where they, Duke University and stuff. Am I totally wrong with that? There, there is like a tech, a tech um, presence, a pretty significant one. It's somewhere in North Carolina or it's, it's getting there. Minneapolis is actually, a, we are home to so many Fortune 500 companies. We have some big ones. Target, this is one of the few companies right now who's seeing growth, who's seeing their stocks go this way instead of this way. Even in April 2020, they're like going like this. They're busier than ever. They do a lot of open source stuff. Um, they have an incredible tech department. I've met a few of them um, going to tech conferences. They Oh, they're just doing everything. GraphQL, React, they're, they're on the, the front line when it comes to the newest and greatest stuff and they're really eager to share. And um, this might be a good time to promote, not promote, but encourage people to start going to tech conferences when possible. Like when society opens up again, do yourself a favor and go to a tech conference. Open Source North, this is where I found out about Target and how hip they are with, with web development. Their people are like deep, bleep, bloop, 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 constantly bleeping and blooping and aware of what's going on in the web. Target.com is a freaking one of the best e-commerce sites in terms of UX UI, in terms of speed, in terms of um, just the tech that they're using. Really cool. Anyway, what was my point? Oh yeah, Minneapolis. So we have we have General Mills, we have some health companies. Best Buy, okay, that's another one. You can't find a laptop at Best Buy in April 2020. They're flying off the shelves. Best Buy, General Mills, the list goes on. 3M, the list goes on. These are companies that are expanding. They're, they're looking for developers at all times. But even still, number one, it's hard to get a dev job uh, as a junior. And when they do pick juniors, even the top one, even at these great companies, they're not making more than six figures. It's just not a thing in the Midwest. Now, year two or three, you're good. You're good. Keep pushing. You can get there. I, I know plenty of people who are year three, year four, who are doing just fine. They're doing just fine. Plus salary, plus all their options, all their, their benefits package, they're doing just fine. Some of these startups, this is a startup culture thing Well, they'll pay you just an equity. Now that's a dangerous one. And I, I don't want to discourage people from following their dream, but it can be dangerous if the company isn't successful. How would you feel as a new developer? You're getting paid an equity. This is a big risk because most companies fail. Most new businesses fail. That's just a fact. Most businesses fail. You might not get paid. You might not get that equity. There might not be any equity to give after that first or second year. Uh, some people have become millionaires by working just for equity. Some new developers have become millionaires. Some, some new developers have become hundreds of thousandaires working with that agreement. Some people have been SOL and have nothing to show for it. How would you feel after that first year, you put your heart and soul into something and you have nothing to show for it. You can't even afford a simple little efficiency apartment on the bad side of town. Like, it's a big risk. And it's an interesting thing too, because I don't know if this was an official study, but I've heard of it being more attractive to guy developers than women developers, uh, because women are generally more risk averse when it comes to those kind of big decisions. So that was an interesting thing to see too, getting paid complete or getting compensated just with equity. I don't know, what do you what do you developers think of that? That's something I would never even I would never do. I just most small businesses fail, most startups fail. I'd rather play the lottery. I'd rather play Powerball and um, slowly bleed my wealth that way than then work for 100% equity. Let's check the comments and see what people are saying about this. 50 people in the chat. Hello, Matacoma Blast. Welcome, new subscribers. Xavier, Javier, better to ask than not, even if it's scary. Javier says, I hate, na I hate negotiation too. Was so afraid to ask. My experience was a stiff 75K. 
So I asked for extra stock options or educational stipend. They bumped it up to 80K. Paradoodly Do says, Agreed. I've been a manager for 15 years and I never blow smoke. I tell people what they'll get paid. If they don't do well, they don't keep the job. If they excel, they get a raise. Jacob says, I make six figures in DC. Rent is even high. Rent is high even in Virginia. Mm-hmm. Yeah, DC is expensive, man. Candace says, Charlotte, North Carolina. Charlotte, North Carolina. Okay, Joseph Whittington, Richmond, VA is up and coming. Candace says, 55000 when I first started in upstate New York as a new developer at a startup. See, that's a that's an example of what I think might be fair. Now, I don't I don't know the cost of living in upstate New York, but I certainly know it's a lot less than New York City. Um, I've, I've visited places like Buffalo. Um, where else? I'm trying to think where else upstate I've visited. Albany. They're fine cities. Uh, but I mean, there is a, I think people, people from outside of America are like, yeah, New York, like New York City is so different than upstate New York. New, upstate New York is just like any other um, it's beautiful. It's just like any other state, you know, you have a, a mix of everything, but it's definitely a lot less uh, chaotic and energetic than New York City. But 55K, I don't think, yeah, I mean, to me, that if someone contacted me from upstate New York as a, as a new developer and said, RTC, we want to interview you, we have on the table for a junior dev, 55K, I'd say, I'll, I'll check it out. I'll check it out. Sakajoa says 67k in Nebraska for my first year. Okay. Roberto, how's it going? Michael says one day we have to have a comparison between the web dev climate of Target v Walmart in 2020. I would love that, Michael. We talk about e-commerce a lot. People talk about starting these e-commerce shops. Let's take a look at the bosses of e-commerce, Walmart and Target. Because Walmart's doing some pretty cool stuff, too. So, great comments. Welcome, everyone. Hassan says, I'm a junior front-end developer. I'll be lucky if I get $250 per month. See, I mean, that's just it. $250, $250 USD in, in another country is... That's just reasonable. You know, so... I know we have a, a big international audience here, so one universal bit of advice I can give is if you're getting a job offer from a company, try and contact former employees, try and do some open source investigation on Google. Um, what I mean by that is just do your homework and see if any, anyone has spilled the beans. Like what has this company traditionally paid for the typical new developer? Um, because any company is going to try and lowball you. Uh, companies, <laughs> companies don't exist to be nice. They exist to make money. And if that they can pay you less, that means they're saving money. And that puts somewhat of a smile on their face. So one of the other things I want to point out, a lot of us are using Indeed. I actually, this is, this is where I applied to almost all of my jobs. I did use other job boards. Um, and I've had interviews with startups. I've had interviews with, with bigger companies. I've had interviews with mom pop type software companies that have been in business for a couple decades and are just looking for an extra employee. Uh, a pretty diverse selection. And for that, I am grateful. But one thing I did notice on Indeed, the numbers that they give you, in my experience, aren't accurate. So we've been going, we, we talked about this a few times in other videos where it's like, okay, you'll, they'll type in JavaScript developer, San Francisco, it'll say 90 to 125. Before you even start that interview, before you even start the phone screen with that recruiter, just somehow diplomatically make sure those are the numbers they're talking about. Now, I know it might be seem, it, it might seem like poor form, like as soon as you get on the phone. Uh, yeah, so this is for that six figure job in San Francisco, right? There are ways to be diplomatic about it. For example, before you start the screen, you can actually go, just go over the bullet points and the major, the major uh, components of the job description. So something you could say might be, let's say the recruiter's name is Joe. You say, 
okay, Joe, it's great talking to you. Just so we're on the same page and just so I know uh, the questions I need to ask today, this is for the service developer associate in Des Moines, Iowa. He'll say, yep, that's correct. This is for the Global Atlantic Financial Group, right? That's correct. Uh, and the starting salary is, or the salary listed is between 80 and 90,000. And that's at that point, you're gonna get the answer. Uh, and if they're misleading you at that point, you got a bigger problem. Uh, but hopefully they will be honest about that and correct you. Like if that's not the case, then they have the obligation to say, actually this job, the employer was looking between 60 and 70. And from there you can decide if you wanna proceed. Because there's no sense in seeing these numbers, getting through the entire interview process to find out they're only offering half of what you thought you were getting. It's hard to negotiate a 40K salary into an 80,000K. But I mean, if it's a few, you know, few thousand, you'll be fine with that. Try to try and push it. But if this company has no interest in paying you a living wage or a living salary, you got to find some other place. Um, and that's why they give the ranges too. Those ranges are good for negotiation. If it says 40 to 60 and that's accurate, they're probably going to offer you 40K. <laughs> I'm making all sorts of weird mouth noises. I'm so, uh, spilling my drink. If it says between 40 and 60, they're probably going to offer you 40. And that 60 is a place you can negotiate for if, if you want. Negotiation, again, is, is a personal decision and it's tough to do. Um, it's just awkward. But going through these two, now I typed in Des Moines, Iowa. This is a city of about 200,000 people. Fun little city. I typed in junior developer. Now if we go over these listings, first of all we have Revature. <sighs> no comment on that. But we have a company like John Deere. We have uh, WebSpec Design, Salmon's Financial, Wells Fargo, all this stuff. Some of these aren't for juniors, but notice none of these have salaries listed. So this is a tougher one too because you're going to have to do more research. The, the, the thing that I'm worried about is we have ideas of what we need to survive and we have ideas of what we're worth and what we know we're worth. Some of these companies, some companies are better than others. We'll just say that. Um, also too, another technique you can do is list salary requirements in your resume. But something like this, there's, there's no hint. There's no hint at what they're offering for the junior software engineer. And I've seen, I've seen salaries disclose more in the tech cities because it is more competitive and people just aren't going to mess around um, when there's with so many, there's so many, just how do I say this? There's a lot of competition. There are a lot of applicants and it's so easy for applicants to just say, okay, you're not listing your salary requirements next. In a place like Des Moines, People applying to jobs in Des Moines are generally from Iowa. So there's less competition. There's less of a pressure to list that salary that they're going to be offering. There's also a site called PESA. This was a site that someone suggested to me a few years ago. I honestly don't know how accurate it is. Apparently you can see what these jobs are paying, but because I've never worked at any of these career or at any of these companies, I have no idea. Can, can we not do the double modal here? What the heck? So annual pay, let's just explore it. Okay, we'll do 50K. So this is PESA.com for anyone interested. I think it's free. The city selected a San Francisco, let's go 50K. Okay, digital marketing, let's go, let's go 100K, okay. Years of experience, less than two years. Like the bubbles to the left represent your career signature. We compare the signature against all our jobs to find the best matches for you. I don't, one to 10. Okay, what happens when I click that? I can't just see this. What about Google? Google, Google, Google. So yeah, this is embarrassing because I really don't know how to use this. I haven't used it hardly at all in the last two years. 
Um, if anyone's used this in the chat, please let me know if this is even worth checking out. Like I said, this was recommended to me a few years ago by a guy uh, who was on my channel. Also looking for other places where people can get realistic salaries. Where can we find those data points? Let's go to the chat. Donovan's here. Hello, Donovan. Golden Boy Gamer, you need some passion to keep you going. It's not all about the money. Rick Cable says, four years of raises has me now around 102K. Not bad. Ramon, how are you? Rick says, late to the convo, current role had initial offer of 85K, and I held my breath, and I waited for a second offer that ended up at 92K in Sacramento. Okay. Developers, this is the type of information that is useful for job hunters because I, I put more trust in my subscribers than I do recruiters on Indeed. So the big message of this video so far is that uh, it really depends on the location of the job. The other factors include uh, your capabilities. As I mentioned earlier in the stream, I'm not... Uh, did I mention this? Let me just mention it right now. I am not the best programmer by any means. Uh, I still consider myself a code newbie in a lot of departments where I just haven't, haven't had time, haven't had the need, haven't had the inspiration to explore. I consider myself a full stack developer, um, but I excel at databases and front end development and design. Backend languages are not my thing. I work with them, but no one's gonna pay me six figures to be a PHP developer. I just, I'm just, I just don't do it enough. I just don't uh, explore it enough. I have a very small ecosystem when I do work with PHP, and I know PHP, but as far as like being uh, a top programmer in that, with that language, not right now, I'm not. So it does, a lot of it does have to do with your aptitude, uh, with your interests with the stack you choose because different stacks get different get get paid differently as well. PHP developers in general have not been paid uh, on par with JavaScript developers and that's because JavaScript is exploding right now and it's not just for the web anymore. This is not your grandfather's JavaScript. We have IoT, we have you can even do machine learning with JavaScript. I mean, it's it's incredible how how the claws of JavaScript have just exploded in all domains. Whereas PHP, you're not going to be doing any machine learning with PHP anytime soon, at least on a level that's perceptible. You're not going to be doing um, IoT with PHP on a level that's perceptible. But JavaScript is different. We're doing a lot of different things with it. We're building more robust web apps uh, with JavaScript stacks, full stack JavaScript. There's no such thing as full stack PHP or full stack Java yet. Wait till WebAssembly comes back or comes again, <laughs> the second coming of WebAssembly. <laughs> Wait till WebAssembly is in full force. I'm so excited. Uh, right now we even have Blazor. You can run full stack C Sharp apps. Or you, you can eventually. I'm not sure if it's a real thing right now. Do you have any Blazor developers here? Full stack. <laughs> Joseph says you can do almost anything with JavaScript these days doesn't mean you should. <laughs> Great point. Exactly. I think JavaScript, I mean, it really has been abused. That's a different topic for a different day. Popk Dodge! Alberto, welcome. Alberto Ruiz says, junior devs get about $5,000 a year here in Mexico. Interesting. Hey, Mila Morris is back. What's up? Love the live stream, she says. Thanks, thanks for tuning in. We're having fun. Yano says, these US, these US salaries are crazy. They are, but it's expensive, man. The cost of living in America, I mean, even compared to 15 years ago. So like, especially the housing market. Now this is changing because of what's going on right now. Um, but like, in a lot of places, you can't get a house for less than a quarter million dollars, even in like okay parts of town. I'm talking about in the Midwest. In Minneapolis right now, you cannot get a single family home in Minneapolis in a, a, a okay 
part of the neighborhood for less than a quarter million dollars. 800 square feet, a one bedroom, 800 square foot, mother-in-law type house, you're gonna be paying a quarter of a million for it. It's insane. Property taxes, man. Uh, even stuff like groceries, now, they could be pricier, but a big chunk of people's salary in the States anyway is going towards their mortgage or their rent. Rents in Minneapolis, and this is a Midwest, this isn't even on the coasts. Uh, I don't even want to get started with, with rent in New York City. Rent in the Bay Area, even rent in LA. I mean, I know people who have good jobs, like Hollywood jobs. They're not CEOs, but they work for the movie industry. They're sharing a house with four other couples, or they're sharing a house with two other couples. And it's like, dude, I know you're making close to six figures, if not more, and your partner is making probably 70. You're bringing in almost just under 200,000 a year and you're, you're, you're living with two other couples. It's expensive here, man. That's, I mean, it is a lot easier to live here than other countries. I'll give, I mean, that's, that's obvious, but yeah, not everything is, is paid in gold here. It's, it's really, especially the housing thing and, and student loans and stuff. But yeah, when some other people are like, yeah, dev job here is four grand a year. I was like, whoa. How much is your, like, how much, okay, so for the person in Mexico, let's, let's get some, let's get some more data points here. Alberto, you said junior devs get about 5k in Mexico. How much, how much money do you have to pay for rent? What is, what is an average apartment, let's say a one bedroom, in uh, your most expensive city, and then like in general, like a general just filler city that's not, that's not really on the map. You know what I mean? Because Des Moines, Iowa, Des Moines, Iowa is a, a, a city, 200,000 people, but it's not on the map. Like no one, probably most people can't point to Iowa even, but there are dev jobs here. Des Moines probably, I don't, I don't remember how much their average apartment is. Like a one or two bedroom is probably like $1,100, $1,200 a month. ASD of JKL says student loan debt is not good debt in the U.S. It's one of the worst kinds of debt to have. Absolutely. I know it is. It really is. And it's terrible. It's a terrible situation. We talked about it the other night in the live stream talking about, uh, <laughs> that was one of the funnest live streams. Somebody had mentioned, Bonnie had mentioned that one of her, a, a friend, a friend's relative was pursuing a bachelor's in anthropology or something. And one of the courses was uh, anthropology and aliens. And it was a $2,000 course. It's like, people are going into debt for that. Big debt. And it's a type of debt you can't erase when you declare bankruptcy. It's still on your record. Let's see. Janos had a comment about the UK. Let's see. Where did that go? Janos says... Same here in the UK, but the dev salaries are lower for some reason. Now, man, the UK is real pricey too. London is like one of the most expensive cities in the world from what I've read and what I've seen. Vancouver, oh my gosh. Don't work in Vancouver. Don't take a dev job in Vancouver unless it's like quarter of a mil. Like seriously, it is, it's, it's more expensive than, than the Bay Area from my understanding. Alberto says, Guadalajara, fancy place, is about 350 bucks a month. Mm-hmm. Okay. Interesting. Thanks for that. And he said, typically in Mexico, dev salary per year is about, did you say 5K? He says, junior devs get about 5K a year here in Mexico. And then he said, Guadalajara, fancy place, is about 350 bucks a month. Okay. Interesting. Pop K Dodge says, I have a background in finance and now I'm with Lambda for data science bootcamp. Hopefully I can land a job in the ATL. Joseph says, Blazer is technically production ready right now. I wouldn't use it though. It's a little lacking. Okay. Thanks for that. I didn't know that. So realistic salary for new devs. Let's go back to my first salary. Um, so we have this thing called taxes. <laughs> and, uh, they suck. I, I, do, I do appreciate a nice paved road 
I do appreciate um, bridges that work. However, taxes here are kind of pricey too. They're not the worst. I mean, they could be a lot worse. They could be a lot worse. Um, but when I took that job for 45 k I was getting taxed for uh, various things. We have Medicare, federal, we have state taxes. We even, uh, fortunately, the city doesn't take a cut of my paycheck yet, or they, cities don't take cuts of paychecks yet. Uh, I'm sure that's a, a thing that's going to be coming soon, though. Um, but after that, uh, all those taxes were taken out. I was pulling in about 1500 just 1500 over. It was like, let me see that check. This check right here is for $1,532.34. So that was what I brought in every two weeks. Because some people um, some people give checks out every week. Some people do uh, overseas. It might be a monthly thing. Here, I got paid every two weeks. That's generally the standard uh, with American businesses. Every two weeks. So after taxes, if you do the math, you know, you're paying, you're paying thousands of dollars in taxes. Now, fortunately, with tax returns and all this stuff, you can get a lot of that back, money owed you. But everyone wants a little taste of that money that you're putting in to your bank account. And the reason, it's really funny. Someone's like, RTC, why do you have all those paper checks? Well, funny story. The owner of my company was obsessed with the AS400. Uh, it's a mid-level server that does just about everything, including payroll, and it was his baby, so he just had to print out checks. Couldn't do the direct deposit, even though it's like, you know, direct deposit has been around for decades. Had to do the paper check. It's like, all right, well, I'll just fire up my phone and deposit it uh, in my bank, which is something just <laughs> light years beyond uh, this guy's sphere of, of reality. I don't want to talk ill of his archaic paychecks, but it kind of got inconvenient. It's like, dude, direct deposit. It's, it's like a thing now. But yeah, taxes. Let's see what the, let's see what the comments are saying. Also shout out to Sipo Charles. He's the newest RTC channel member and he is making these videos possible along with my other uh, YouTube members and patrons. Uh, Patreon.com slash Real Tough Candy. If you want to support these streams, if you want to support uh, the work we're doing, showing people the explosive nature and the opportunities just abounding with software development, consider signing up at Patreon.com slash Real Tough Candy or becoming a channel member. If you're a channel member, one of the perks there is that you get a really cool piece of candy next to your name like Donovan <laughs> and other people who are members. Thank you for your financial support. Joe says 45k is good for 20 somethings. I need at least 60. Matt McPherson, I take home 43k a year as a truck driver. All of these salaries from people, all of these salaries from people does get me a little excited when I change careers. Right. And that is something I want to talk about right now, too. So listen, listen, this is very important. So many people get the idea that the salary they take at their first dev job is going to be their death sentence. It's going to be with them for a year. My friend Laszlo got a $10,000 raise the first month on the job. All right? He's in our Discord. If you want to pick his brain, I don't know. I don't know if he's all about it. I don't want to sacrifice him to the gods of Discord, but this was public info that Vlaslo shared. His third weekend, he got a $10,000 raise. He is not in, he's not even on a coast, from my understanding. He's not in San Francisco. The reason he got that raise was because he knew a technology that his teammates did not. And because he had that knowledge, boom, that 10K just fell right in his lap. And not only that, he now gets to build projects using that tech, doing things, taking things more into his world and taking control about design decisions, about features, about how these should be designed and developed. He is getting a million dollars worth of experience with this new project. And it's just so exciting to hear. This is not uncommon. Raises are not uncommon, and if you are not getting what you think you're, if you're not getting paid what you think you're worth, have a meeting with your senior dev, have a meeting with your supervisor, talk it out, have go, but go into that meeting prepared. You can't. It, it's all about the angle of the dangle. 
You can't go into that meeting, uh, you know, legs spread, drinking a kombucha. <laughs> Do I speak from personal experience? You can't go in there unprepared. You have to have a list of things you've accomplished, how they have added value to the company, and you have to have a rationale for why you deserve that raise, whether it's $500 or $10,000 or more. You have to have that rationale. What value have you added to that company to deserve that raise? Now, if your boss cares, which fortunately most of them do, we hear a lot about the horror stories of bad bosses. They're out there, no doubt. But most bosses care. They might not always show it. If your boss cares, they're going to listen to you and they're going to consider what you have to say. If you don't get that raise, it's disheartening, but it doesn't mean you have to quit um, or do anything drastic. But maybe after that first year, try and find another opportunity that pays more. Because after that first year, I mean, it really is, once you get your foot in the door, you're, you're good. Just keep your foot in the door. Just keep your foot wedged and make sure you're inside the building that year because opportunities are going to rain on you. Like, just pour it out on you. Just being out here doing YouTube, I have people approaching me all the time for all sorts of stuff. I can't even get to the projects. Um, and I'm, people want to pay me. Like, these aren't um, volunteer projects. People want to pay me for this kind of stuff. And I, I have to say no sometimes. The more you're out there, the more you're doing it, the more people are going to respond to you and your demands, i.e. how much you want to get paid. Um, so if you're uh, just, just a word of encouragement, you know, that first year you might not be making, you might not be hand doing hand over fist, pulling in this cash, but that first year really is a training period as well for typical developers. Now, if you're a star performer, six figures should be a demand. If you know your worth, if you know exactly the value you can add to that company, you should be making some demands. If you're still in learning mode and you're still trying to get the hang of this stuff while working at a job. You should expect just a, you should expect a little less because there that company is also giving you a chance to build your skills, and that's an invaluable opportunity. For some of us, the first year on a, on the job is like an internship. For others, um, we're just gonna go just pedal to the metal and rock it out and be a, a top performer. Others fall between those two things, so it really. Junior developers are not all the same. We have different abilities, we have different stacks, we have different interests. And as one, as the, one of the commenters pointed out, you have to have some sort of interest in it. Um, and I would agree with that. Or maybe they said passion. I don't necessarily agree that you have to have passion. Um, I'm passionate about things that aren't worth money. I'm passionate about like friends, family. I'm passionate about breathing. I'm passionate about kombucha. I enjoy software development, I enjoy coding, but am I passionate about it? I'm not going to die for it, you know what I mean? Like, I'm interested in it and I enjoy it, uh, but I'm not passionate about it. But I think you do have to have an interest in it because if you're just doing it for the money, you may as well go be a bartender. Bartenders make more their first year than software developers if you go to, go to a bar and, and work 40 hours a week. Bartenders, I know, are bringing in anywhere between $100 and $500 a night cash, okay? Cash, untaxed, off the, under the table. The problem with bartending is that it kills your soul. Big difference. Let's go to the chat. What's up, Ruben? Rick Cable says the money is where the hard stuff is. Yeah, problem solving. The harder the problem you solve, the more you're going to get paid straight up. Alberto says, I'm currently working as the IT developer for a local company. I'm thinking about staying for about a year and then leave the nest. Yeah, that year, that year mark really is important for multiple reasons. But another reason is that when you apply to other companies, if they find out you've only been at a, uh, you've only been a developer at a company for three months, that's going to be a big red flag. If they find out you've been at a company for six months, it's still a red flag because from the eyes of the company, they're trying to assess your suitability for their position. Um, and if you have something on your resume where you've left after three months, they're going to have some reservation about that. Because what if you leave after only three months? You're still in training at that job after three months. You know, after three and four months. And that's a thing, too. Um, doing research about different companies, you will find that to, to, to train the typical employee, 
takes three to four, five, sometimes six months, sometimes more. Paradoodly do have mentioned she was in management. Paradoodly, how long did it take you to train up a typical employee? So your management, just to be clear, was not in tech, but this is just to illustrate uh, how much longer it, it could possibly take in a tech job to train someone up because the skills are a lot more complex, generally speaking. How long before you felt comfortable with that employee doing things on their own without asking questions to be at the point where they could be essentially self-sufficient? Let me know. I'm interested because I think it's like three to four months. That could be even an understatement. Wayne says, I was making 50K as a bartender, back-end engineer intern now. Or Wesley. Sorry, Wesley. Wesley Wine. Yeah, man. 50K is not bad for, for slinging drinks and going like this to, to beer tops. I did it too. It's good money. It's fast money. Uh, the problem is a lot of people uh, snort coke and like to party really hard. So you got to be careful, man. <laughs> the service industry is a, a really... A, Different lifestyle than the typical software developer lifestyle. You got, you got to really be careful. Let's check the content uh, comments. Paradoodly do says fully training somebody in two months until they excel six months. That might possibly be the MVP comment of this chat. Because there is a difference, there is a big difference between fully training someone and having them excel. Paradoodly is saying it takes, it took her an average of about two months to train someone and then half a year in order for them to excel at her company. That's a long time. And it's something to consider too as a newbie. Um, it takes quite a few months to get trained up. And each day you're training, those are skills that you can use and you can apply later down the road to get paid more, to work at a more exciting company, and to just level up. And usually there's nothing preventing you from uh, doing things on the... Okay, I should rewind that statement. Make sure your company lets you do side projects um, and freelancing and stuff. Because that could be another opportunity too. Uh, doing a, a side gig, a, a technical side gig with the skills that you're learning. Now, some companies are, are very strict about that. Uh, no, they, ugh, man, some of them are really greedy. They'll say, anything you develop on your own is our property. It's like, dang, really? This is my private time out of work. Too bad. You're coding. It's ours. Like, what? That's a thing? Yes, that's a thing. Wesley says, service industry is no joke. The most interesting people you will ever meet. Totally. Totally. It's a, it's such a different, it's, it's a fast, it's a fast ride. Great comments. 71 people in the chat. Developers, do me a favor, hit that like button and tell YouTube that I deserve to be here doing live streams. Uh, the more likes we get, the more engagement we get, and uh, the more I can, the more live streams I can do. So smash it. Smash it. Rick says I work on portal apps that connect to multiple in-house and third-party cloud-based systems. It's pretty complex. Michael Kornbloom says retail moderators in the house. <laughs> hmm. But yeah, the first couple months as a software developer, you are you are bringing value to the company, but generally you are costing them more money in training and just getting you set up. And as Paradoodly mentioned, in her industry, two months to get trained, six months to excel. I don't have any hard data on software development, but come to your own conclusions on that. Developers, it's 640. I want to thank everyone for tuning in. My time here is coming to an end. We had a great live stream, so many great comments. If you are watching this and the video, the live is over and you're watching it on playback, be sure to enable the chat feature because half of what this makes, half of this live stream are the people in the chat. 
I want to give a shout out to my new patrons over at patreon.com slash real tough candy. Also shout out to my YouTube channel members. They have awesome little pieces of candy next to them. Many ways to support the channel. If you can't financially support right now, I completely understand. Just do me a favor and hit a thumb, smash a button. That's uh, one of the best things you can do if, if the cash game is not an option right now. But either way, I thoroughly appreciate your support. These live streams are so fun. We're gonna be we're gonna be trying to do one every day till we hashtag smash smash the curve. <laughs> That's my new hashtag, till we smash that curve. <laughs> till we flatten the curve. Uh, here in the States, and I hope everyone else, great international audience tonight, I hope everyone else is staying safe. Wash your hands. Take a breath. Get some fresh air if you can. Oops. Make a, make a funny noise with your hands if you want for some comedic relief. Stay safe out there and stay sane. As always, thanks for watching. I hope you're having a great day, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.